My name is Martina Messing-Jünger and I'm a pediatric neurosurgeon. My presentation is about initial evaluation and surgical indications for craniosynostosis. The initial evaluation consists of inspection, palpation, morphometry like head circumference and height measurements as well as calculation of the cephalic index and imaging such as surface scans, sonography, MRI in syndromic cases and rarely CT scans and X-rays in order to avoid radiation exposure. Further investigations are ophthalmology, especially to rule out papilledema and genetics in suspected syndromic cases. The inspection of a skull will show us typical head deformities and is the most important technique the neurosurgeon is using. Here you can see typical graphs. Graph A shows a sagittal synostosis and the resulting dolichocephalus, which is the most important craniosynostosis and is found in up to 40% of all cases. Here we see a more rare affection of both coronal sutures and the sagittal suture, which leads to this kind of um, uh, yeah, syndromic uh, appearance where we have a very small head and this, um, as already said, is very suspective for syndromic um, craniosynostosis. A bilateral coronal synostosis, as seen here, with a brachycephalus, uh, with a little bit of uh, oxycephalus um, here in this um, picture, is also suspected for a syndromic um, craniosynostosis. A unilateral coronal synostosis leads to a typical anterior plagiocephalus with harlequin eye and facial um, scoliosis and is seen um, in 12% of the cases. A metopic suture, which is closed very early, will lead to a typical trigonocephalic deformity, which is nowadays um, the second um, important um, synostosis and it shows over the last decades an increase in incidence. The reason for this is not completely understood for the moment. And here again, the affected sutures and the predictable deformity. Is the metopic suture involved a trigonocephalus results? Is the sagittal suture involved? A scaphon or dolichocephalus results? Depending on the shape, we will see a typical case later on. In unilateral coronal suture involvement, anterior plagiocephalus is resulting and in bilateral brachycephalus. Is the lambdoid suture involved? We have a brachy or plagiocephalus, depending on the fact whether it's uni or bilateral. Bilateral is extensively rare. And of course, also overlapping deformities are possible, especially metopic and sagittal can be found in one page. Before we look at the true craniosynostosis extensively, I would like to show you the important differentiation between a positional skull deformity and a true craniosynostosis, because this is something you will see all day in pediatric clinics. Skull deformities can be caused by external pressure or a preferred head positioning during the interuterine or postnatal phase. This graph shows nicely the decrease of rate in sudden infant death syndrome after the year 2000. And this happened because of the strong recommendation for spine sleeping position of babies. 
But at the same time, we could see an increase in positional skull deformities. A child which only sleeps in a spine position will eventually develop a preferred side like this child, which has a positional plagiocephaly on the left side because of the constant pressure which works on this portion of the skull. But also a more symmetrical position of brachycephalus can be found as in this, as very nicely seen in this child. And sometimes pediatricians can be confused by a position of plagiocephalus and a suspected, a suspected um, real plagiocephalus caused by a synostosis. But there are typical signs to differentiate both clinically. If you look at the top of a head of a child with a position of plagiocephalus, you will see a kind of parallelogram because if we have pressure from the at, at the left side of the back, we will have on the same side a protrusion of the forehead. And this eventually leads to the form of a parallelogram. In cases of a true plagiocephalus um, caused by a coronal synostosis, like here on the right side, we have a retruded right frontal a forehead and a retruded occiput. And this leads to a shortened length on the right half of the skull compared to the left half of the skull. And this will lead to a trapezoid if we look at the top of the skull of the child. But also looking at the back of the head in the position of plagiocephalus has a very typical appearance in respect of the ear position. The ear position is, if we are looking from the back, in the same line. Only when we are looking from the top, then we see that in the horizontal plane, the ear has an anterior position. On the contrary, if we have a posterior plagiocephalus caused by a true lambdoid synostosis, the ear is deeper on the affected side. And at the same time, if we look at the top, we can see again that the back is flattened, but also the forehead is retruded and this again leads to a trapezoid. And this here is a photograph of a child from the back. And you can see here the right ear is, has a deeper position and also similar to the facial scoliosis in a true coronal synostosis, we can see here a scoliotic deviation of the entire head to the contralateral side, which is quite typical. Palpation is sometimes also um, a good um, investigation technique. And here in this sagittal synostosis, there is a palpable crest. And at the same time, which is also found quite often in patients with sagittal synostosis, we can see and also palpate a saddle deformity. Here you can see some historic pictures of tools which were used for cephalic morphometry. But also head circumference curves are helpful in order to um, have parameters which are useful over the long time um, follow up measurements. Nowadays, the data obtained 
with surface scans, like here this laser um, technique um, setting, uh, are helpful for morphometry as well, since they obtain morphometric um, data. The most important parameter as a baseline and also follow-up um, investigation of children with craniosynostosis is the cephalic index. The cephalic index is the biparietal diameter, the BPD, multiplied by 100, which is then divided by the occipital frontal diameter, the OFD. And the brachycephalic head is defined to have a cephalic index greater than 83. A normal cephalic head has a CI of 74 up to 83. And the dolichocephalic head is defined as CI smaller 78. Imaging is also important. Suture sonography is nowadays widely used, and here you can see a closed coronal suture and an open contralateral suture in the same patient. This here is a closed sagittal suture with this crest-like um, appearance here. And this is another patient with an open sagittal suture and a very nice open sagittal sinus. MRI is also useful, especially in patients with syndromic craniosynostosis, like this girl with, Chiari, with the Chiari 1 condition in a Cousin's syndrome. And this is the reason why we perform MRI in these children, because um, syndromic, syndromic craniosynostosis um, very often um, have this uh, Chiari conditions and also CSF circulation disorders. These are historic pictures of CT scans. Um, we are rarely using CT scans in these days, um, but of course you can nicely see here the uh, trigonocephalus with the hypotelorism and here in these uh, three-dimensional reconstructions, um, a, bilat a bilateral uh, coronal, um, a coronal synostosis leading to a brachycephalus, and here a typical um, anterior plagiocephalus caused by a left si by a left-sided um, coronal uh, synostosis with the harlequin eye, and also the facial. Um, scoli uh, scoliosis towards the contralateral side. And here a severe case of Cousin syndrome with bony um, atrophies, uh, pressure atrophies of the entire skull. What are the surgical indications? Surgical indications are cosmetic, psychosocial, or an increased intracranial pressure, which can be seen by papillae edema or patients with chronic headache. And also a secondary carry condition can be a sign of an increased intracranial pressure. Or we can perform invasive ICP measurement and then um, prove an elevated ICP. But also um, recently, probably related to the increased intracranial pressure, um, changes in the brain um, architecture and connectivity um, have been um, investigated, and they can be um, they can they can cause um, in the end uh, neuropsychological deficits. In most of the cases, these neuropsychological deficits are very subtle, but nevertheless, um, there, are, there is more and more um, 
evidence that um, these conditions also have an impact on the um, neuropsychological performance of these children. Also, ophthalmological indications um, exist, like papilledema or optic nerve atrophy. And also, astigmatism, especially in um, uh, anterior plagiocephalus and also um, trigonocephalus patients. And proptosis, of course, in cases with syndromic craniosynostosis. Maxillofacial indications in the syndromic um, population, um, mainly because of mid-face retrusion and orthodontic um, indications um, in syndromic patients with occlusion disorders. And these are the surgical techniques. Um, accordingly, cranioplasty for form correction and augmentation. Distraction techniques can be used to increase the skull, but also to um, um, correct the mid-phase retrusion. Decompression technique is mainly um, performed um, at the foramen magnum in Chiari conditions. And of course, uh, if we have a disturbed um, CSF circulation, um, shunting or endoscopic third ventriculostomy um, can be indicated. In the end, I would like to show you um, some typical cases in order to um, teach you um, in the inspection. This here is a trigonocephalic child with a typical rim in the forehead and hypotelorism and epicanthus and a so-called pseudostrabism. But if you look at the reflexes here at the um, pupils, you can see that it is completely symmetric and there is no true strabism in this child. And here you can see the typical trigonocephalic head shape. And here again, hypotelorism, pseudostrabism and the rim the same here. Sagittal synostosis leads to two major deformities. One is the scaphocephalus, which is shown here in the lower patient, um, where the head has the shape of the, um, of the underside of a boat. And the dolichocephalus is the typical long skull, and both names, scaphos is Greek for boat, and dolichos is Greek for long, come from the Greek origin. And here we can see um, typical um, faces of an anterior plagiocephalus caused by unilateral coronal synostosis with a typical forehead retrusion, a harlequin eye, and the facial scoliosis towards the contralateral side. The brachycephalus has a retrusion of the forehead and at the same time also the orbits are pulled upward and this is a little bit like a bilateral harlequin's eye and of course you can see here the reduced AP diameter of the skull. And this is the case um, of uh, Landoid um, um, suture problem here on the right side and what you can see is that you do not only have the um, retrusion here um, in the occipital area where the um, fused lambdoid suture is, but also retrusion of the forehead of the same side. So again, a shorter right skull compared to the left skull, which leads in the end to the parallelogram, uh, to the trapezoid. And also here, a low Eye, uh, ear of in the, uh, on the affected side and the scoliotic head deviation towards the contralateral side. In the very end, a few um, syndromic cases. This here is uh, 
a typical croissant face with proptosis and the midfacial retrusion. And this is a typical Aper syndrome with the retrusion in the glabella area and this typical eye portion and the occlusion disorder and pathognomonically fused fingers and sometimes also fused tooth. The Cetra Chodson syndrome um, can have a, a variable um, synostosis, but it is quite typical um, for these cases uh, that the children have ptosis, like here in this small child. Münke syndrome is difficult to um, assess by inspection because the phenotype can um, have lots of variations and like in all other um, syndromic craniosynostosis, um, of course, genetic um, workup is very, very important. Last but not least, um, a very rare case of bear stevenson cutis gerata syndrome with this typical um, skin changes and overgrowth of the umbilicus and sometimes also of the fingers. And in these cases, MRI are necessary because most of them um, have hydrocephalic um, problems and also can also um, show a Chiari condition. I hope with these pictures you have been trained to um, identify affected children by their typical deformities and um, yeah, I thank you very much for your attention.